I'm Steve for This Equip Cars, and today I'm here with my 2023 Land Rover Defender. The new Defender is a great truck, and I like it very much, but it's not perfect. Today, I'm going to start my series of upgrades to my new Defender, and I'm going to start with the interior. A few of these upgrades are must-haves for any Defender owner, and a few things I'm doing just to protect the truck because of the rugged way that I'm planning to use it. The very first thing that I did inside the Defender was put a glass screen protector on this display. You can see the edges of it right there, but really it's completely invisible. And the feel of this glass is very smooth. It's much better than the plastic feel that you get from the standard screen. The standard screen is not a real joy to touch, but once you put this glass on here, it feels like a much higher quality product and it will protect the screen from scratches and it's a whole lot easier to clean. So if you have a Defender and you take anything away from this video, it should be to get one of these glass screen protectors. And I got this one on Amazon and I'll put the link in the description below. My next item I consider as a must have for any Defender owner as well. And this is the installation of a genuine Land Rover part. And this is something that should have come on your Defender when it was brand new, but might not have due to supply chain issues. There's a little cap right here, and underneath this cap is a connection for a USB port. And a lot of Defenders were shipped without a USB port there. So to fix that, order this part number. I got this one from Lucky 8 Off-Road Equipment. They are the company that comes up with the Trophy and Trek editions for Land Rover North America. Let's open this up. This is very easy to install, but if your dealer thinks they can't get a hold of one of these, just contact Lucky 8, get one from them, and have your dealer install it if you think this job is too hard for you. I will need some sort of plastic pry tool to get this cap up. I'm going to put it right here on the corner, twist it, and popped out. Now down inside of here somewhere should be the connector. It looks like my connector is taped to another piece of wire in there. I don't see a real good way of getting a hold of it. This tape is really sticky. There you can see the connector. It's the yellow brown one and the black tape taping it to the wire next to it. There's the end of the tape. I almost have it wrapped back around the wire that it's taped to. I just can't get it with my fingers alone. Let's try a couple little hooks. Okay, I got the connector. I just need to figure out how to maneuver it out of there. There we go. Get this tape off of here. With the connector held up here, now I can connect it into the back of the USB port. And then slide the whole thing in. There is a flat side. The rest of it is round, so this will only go in one direction. There we go. And that's done. This will allow the passenger to be able to charge their devices without using one of the USB ports on the center console. And speaking of the center console, I've actually been using this in the Defender for a couple months now, and I absolutely love it. I did get this from Lucky 8 Off-Road as well. I took it back out so that I can show you how easy it is to install this and to make one modification. This tray fits down in this empty area right here where you would normally have your USB plugs and your cigarette outlet plug. And it adds another USB, a USB Type-C, and two wireless phone chargers. And these do move up and down so you can use it with various size phones. This device also has little fans that blow out right here to keep it cool. And this entire thing only uses the cigarette outlet plug. It does not plug into the USB system of the vehicle. 
which, which I absolutely love because I don't like that when I plug a phone into one of these USBs that it automatically starts CarPlay or Android Auto on that device. Usually, like a passenger, just wants to charge their phone and I don't want it connecting to my radio. So I would prefer just having power plugs like these because this is only getting power from the cigarette outlet. There is no digital connection between this and the vehicle. If you do want to maintain one of these for a digital connection to your phone, or in my case, use the charger that goes to the winch control, I went and got one of these right angle adapters on Amazon. This way I can plug this in here. My USB hangs down below where this is going to fit. There's plenty of room here in between this plug now and the back of this device when it's in there. I can plug in the charger for my winch control, set it down there, and I can have my winch controller plugged in and charging and out of the way while I'm on the trail. So to install this, just plug in your outlet, just like that, bring it over and slide it into place. And that's it, it's ready to go. We turn the vehicle on, you can see this powers up. Now I can put two devices in here for Q charging, as well as in the original Q charger back here. So that gives me a total of three devices that I can wirelessly charge, as well as using the powered USB ports here and here. I know this isn't going to be for everybody, but this is definitely a game changer for my Defender. I use this all the time, almost every time that I drive the Defender. My next upgrade is something that I've had in the works for months now. All of these covers are custom made for your vehicle. And these of course come from Melville and Moon. They have been making expedition equipment for Land Rovers, as well as expedition furniture for a very, very, very long time. And I thought this would be the perfect fit for this Defender. So let's open it up and take a look. First on top here is a neat little envelope containing my invoice. These covers were of course made specifically for me in South Africa. How neat is that? Down here it says the choice of all pioneers and professional adventurers, Melville and Moon. First item here is a spare tire cover. It says Safari Equippers and Suppliers, Millville and Moon, Lion Proofed. And then I have seat covers for the front seats as well as the rear seat. Okay, there is a lot of pieces to this kit. Let's get this installed. Here is a before look of the seats. I have the seat covers installed. I know they're not perfect yet. I can still tighten them up. I'll probably be tightening things and adjusting things for a while. There was even a cover for the center console. There are little pouches everywhere. And on the backs of the seats, there's a big pouch as well as a zippered one. Here in the back, the bottom cover is one cover for the whole bottom cushion. And then these are three individual covers. All the headrests, all five of them also have their own covers. And this flap even flips up so you can bring down the center console out of that middle seat. You can kind of see the pull strap for it right there. Just flip this cover up and then that console will even come down. And of course, all of the spots where you have little buttons or releases, they're all cut out on these covers. I think Melville and Moon have thought of everything. I think it took me about an hour to get all the covers installed to this point. Like I said, after I sit in them, get them stretched out, start tightening them up a little more, should take all of the wrinkles out of the seats. 
And of course now I can hop in here with dirty clothes. I don't have to worry about destroying the seats. This is a very tough material. You can throw your dogs in the back and not have to worry about them destroying any of the interior. I almost forgot to show you how good the tire cover looks. That's gonna be it for today. This is just the first of my videos on new Defender mods. Next time I'll start with what I think are the most important modifications for the exterior of the new Defender. So if you wanna see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.